I'm Dan Featherstone, and thank you for joining me for Tech Tips. These are very specific and to-the-point trainings intended to be roughly 5 to 10 minutes long each. Today we are focusing on how to read the friction loss chart. So with that, click anywhere and let's get started. To begin with, there are a variety of ways of calculating friction loss. Williams and Hazing and Darcy and Weisbeck being the most popular in our industry. For this, we are only focusing on the Williams and Hazing and Darcy Weisbeck approaches. What is the major difference? William and Hazing calculates an aging factor for the pipe, planning for down the road performance, if you will. The good news is we do not have to do all the math. What we do need to know is how to read the charts, though. The charts are typically based upon 100 foot lengths of pipe. It also shows calculations based upon flow in different pipe materials here. Some charts, however, may only show the flow of one type of pipe. The key is to read all the notes of the chart and understand what they are showing and how they are calculating the loss. Never assume that they are all Williams and Hazing type charts and that the aging factor is already figured in. If you need to age the pipe, it is a general industry guideline that we add 15% to our calculation. One key factor is the C value of the material the water is flowing through. This is the smoothness factor, if you will. Steel being the standard in the last century was the standard on which other pipes were compared to for these charts. Thus, steel is graded 100. The smoother the material as compared to steel, the higher the number will be. The rougher the material as compared to steel, the lower the number will be. Can this affect the friction loss number? We will explore this in future slides. Typically, most charts are laid out as follows. The first column being the flow. It might be gallons per minute. It could be meters, however they wish to report it. The second column is often the velocity. Again, it might be in feet per second. It could be in meters, centimeters. It might even be in parsecs, which is, in fact, a measurement of distance and not time. The next columns are typically the pipe materials and what they're constructed of, and also a C value reflecting the smoothness that was used to calculate the chart. Some charts as shown here might have three different materials. Others might reflect only one. They will also give you the inner diameter of the pipe as calculated. So how do we read the chart? Well, it's very straightforward. Find the diameter of the pipe in question. Find that group. Here we're looking at half inch. Second is what is the design or desired flow for that pipe in the system. In this case, we're looking at four gallons per minute. And finally, what is the material of construction that we're flowing through? As you see here, we've highlighted four gallons per minute. The next two columns will show velocity in feet per second. Here, we have a velocity showing a 4.2 feet. Remember, on the section side, we strive to remain under five feet per second. And on the discharge, we try to keep it under seven feet per second, ideally. And finally, the friction loss, which in this case is expressed in feet of head for plastic. In this example, we see that the loss is 14.8 feet of head. Per 100 feet, as we saw earlier, the chart was based upon 100 foot lengths. A quick point to remember is that if you divide 14.8 by that magic number 2.31, we'll get the pressure loss which is 6.4 PSI. Some charts vary in that they might only show one material. This chart focuses on PVC Schedule 40, for example, only. This one also has a variety of sizes and diameters, including a section of five inch pipe, as opposed to the earlier one that only went up to inch and a half or two inch. But they all read the same. It may take a moment to understand how the chart is organized. Again, if we focus just on half inch pipe, we can compare the data. Looking at the four gallon per minute, we first notice that the velocity is 4.23 feet. But compared to the first chart, it differs only by the expanded decimal point, 0.23 versus 0.2, and how the numbers were rounded. But you will also notice the friction loss differs by more than what can be accounted for by the decimal point or rounding in the map. So, what accounts for this difference? 
in reading the chart, I found that the chart was actually based on a C factor of 150 versus a C factor of 140 in the earlier chart. So to answer that question, yes, the smoothness can affect how the chart will read the friction loss. All right then, to recap, what size pipe, what is the flow, and what is the velocity? What is the pipe material? And that will give you the friction loss. So thank you, have a great day, be kind to each other.